Hi there, I'm Yumna Patel, Palestine News Director at Mondawise. In this podcast, I sat down with Katie Halper, host of The Katie Halper Show, to talk about her identity as an anti-Zionist Jewish American who's been vocal about her support of Palestine. We talk about everything from Jewish identity to lessons from the Holocaust and Zionists like Amy Schumer and some of her more problematic posts in recent months. Take a listen. We're seeing a lot of pro-Israel supporters right now evoking the memory of the Holocaust to justify Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Palestinians or supporters of Palestine are being referred to as Nazis. And of course, Israeli representatives at the UN are wearing yellow stars reminiscent of Nazi Europe when Jews were forced to identify themselves in that way. So first of all, I want to ask you what, like, what first came to your mind when you saw that stunt at the UN? Yeah, I mean, I was kind of amused and disgusted at the same time and if it weren't so disturbing and if it weren't actually part of a very dangerous campaign PR campaign to justify the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians it would be amusing but it's not amusing because that's what it's being used to do I mean it's a disgusting weaponization and trivialization of the Holocaust by a country, by a government, I should say, that first of all, gets offended. Nothing can be compared to the Holocaust, right? This is kind of their line, that the Holocaust was a unique incident. And it was, it was unique. And I mean, I've said this before, I lost family to the Holocaust. I'm not ignorant about its devastation. But the same people who claim that it's a unique incident that can never be compared to anything are now comparing what is happening now to the Holocaust. They're comparing a, an occupation that's being um, managed by Israel. They're comparing what happened on October 7th, which was tragic and horrific and people died. But Israel right now, as we speak, as we're recording, and whenever people are watching this, Israel is going to be at the very moment killing innocent civilians, not using any um, targeting, as they themselves have said. So watching the aggressors in this conflict paint themselves as the victims is really disgusting. And, you know, the takeaway of the Holocaust, never again, should not be never again just to Jews. It should be never again to anyone ever again. And I think we're seeing a real division um, among Jews in terms of what the takeaway of the Holocaust is and should be. And I think for some Jews, and I obviously would fall in this category, the lesson of the Holocaust is to fight against ethnic cleansing and genocide and stand with the persecuted and the oppressed, not to stand with the ethnic cleansers. Now, for other Jews, sadly, we see never again is only for Jews. And anything that Israel does is justifiable because in their minds, Israel represents the interests of Jews. Now that's a whole other discussion, but I don't feel safer because of Israel. In fact, I think Israel contributes to anti-Semitism. I think Jews need to be speaking out, uh, not only to uh, stand with Palestinians, which we should be, but also to show the world that not all Jews support Israel and that being Jewish is not being Zionist. And the irony is that that's an anti-Semitic trope in itself. You know, so you have anti-Semites who constantly conflate being a Jew with being a Zionist. And then you have the ADL and APAC and Israel in itself making that same point, which again is an anti-Semitic stereotype. You know, it's linked to the whole dual loyalty trope. Like we're loyal to Israel more than we are to whatever government, whatever country we live in or whatever country we're citizens of. So sorry, I'm I'm going a little all over the place, but it's because it's such an overwhelming thing. How do you how how does one even react to this? I mean, I I can't imagine people who were in the Holocaust, who survived the Holocaust, looking forward and seeing people using the Star of David while they are themselves ethnically cleansing people. I mean, what happened October seventh happened on October seventh. It's not happening right now, right? The the event of October 7th, which, of course, did not happen in a vacuum, and we can talk about that. But what we're just we're we're seeing now is a dehumanization that's reminiscent in some ways of the Holocaust. I mean, if you want to compare it to the Holocaust, what we're seeing 
is the world stand by while a powerful government ethnically cleanses a population, tries to wipe them out, at the very least tries to move them, and is killing them indiscriminately. Now, there are differences, and it's not the same kind of mechanized concentration camp to, to um, extermination process that we saw. So I want to be clear about that. There are differences. But in terms of who is in power right now and who is at risk, it is not Jews. It's the Palestinians. Those are the people being slaughtered right now. That's what needs to happen. There needs to be a ceasefire, not drumming up of tribalism and fear mongering to distract from what Israel is doing. I mean, you see these things like, would you hide me? I don't know if you want to get into that, but people like Jews need to be standing with Palestinians right now. You can always find an example of anti Semitism. Anti Semitism is real. Now, of course, What's so dangerous is is conflating anti-Semitism with anti-Zionism because now people don't take anti-Semitism as seriously because I think they're so used to to saying, oh, that that's not really anti-Semitic, that's anti-Zionist. And that, of course, like uh, trivializes actual anti-Semitism, which is real. I'm not saying anti-Semitism isn't real, but Jews are not being slaughtered right now. Palestinians are. And that's, and so, I mean, you hit on a bunch of different things, but yeah. one one thing, which is great, but one thing that I want to talk about, it, which you mentioned, is this like massive campaign of sort of self-victimization that's yeah. going on, right? And sort of this this whole trend that was happening of like, would you hide me, right? right. And so that it's not to discount that anti-Semitism is, is very real and anti-Semitic attacks are happening, but... What we're seeing in the media, in pop culture, let's say on social media, both from celebrities and then from ordinary like Jewish Americans and Zionists right. is perpetuating this narrative of like, check in on your Jewish friends. Like right. we are not safe. We don't feel safe. Like, would you hide me? I guess to me, like, I, I don't want to discount anyone feeling unsafe because anti-Semitism is very real. But I mean, what do you make of as as a Jewish person, as a Jewish right. American, what do you make of it when you see these sort of trends on social media and these like lines being perpetuated? Right. I mean, I think a good test, honestly, to see if someone is really afraid and in good faith is to see if they also extended any concern with uh is to see if they had any problem with what's happening right now in Palestine. If you're a Jew who feels unsafe because you feel like there have been, there's been an increase in, I, I don't even know if this is true. The ADL says it is, but the ADL is constantly saying this. And the, and there, I highly recommend this documentary, by the way, called Defamation, which was made by an Israeli Jew who they mistakenly assumed was going to be on their side. And so they're totally transparent and you can see the things that they count as anti-Semitic attacks. They're not, I don't think things that lots of us would consider anti-Semitic attacks, but I'm not going to judge anyone who feels unsafe. But what I can say is that if your safety is more important than speaking out against the actual slaughter of Palestinians, which we know is happening because it's been documented because Israeli officials announced that they were going to do that. They themselves said, you know, the president of Israel is like this rhetoric of civilians. It's ridiculous. Uh, suggesting that all Palestinians were legitimate targets. He said, you know, they voted for these people. You have Benjamin Netanyahu invoking the Bible, um, the Torah, which is never a good sign, right? When you're talking about wiping people out, you may not want to do that. Um, you have generals talking about damage being more important than precision. So they're forecasting this genocide and we see them doing it. And they're not taking precautions to protect civilians, obviously. Uh, they are engaging in, they're literally bombing refugee camps. There's nothing that Israel can do that Israel defenders won't justify. I think that's an important thing to recognize. So we have to be strategic about how who we try to reach out to. But in terms of the question of the would you hide me, is it a coincidence that this is happening right now as Israel engages in this ethnic cleansing? I mean, can you have room for both people? Like, I'm, it, I'm fine with you speaking to anti-Semitism and uh, raising awareness about anti-Semitism, if I also see raising awareness about the slaughter of Palestinians. If you don't care about those people, then you're not being 
um, an ally, you're not in solidarity, and you only care about your own people suffering, which I'm sorry is not comparable right now. I understand people may be fearful of things. You're not being slaughtered the way Palestinians are being slaughtered as the world watches. And I think that it will make people less sympathetic when there actually is anti-Semitism, because I think people see through this and they see this as a weaponization. Will, will you hide me? All of a sudden, as Israel is starting to kill Palestinians, they do that constantly, but they're doing it in higher numbers. All of a sudden, there are these campaigns, which I'm sure are Hasbara campaigns, um, because Israel has a very good war of uh, propaganda and a very good discursive war. And you can see that. And it's, it's even hard for me right now. I'm kind of like, oh, how do I say this in a way that doesn't make me sound like I'm perpetuating an anti-Semitic trope? But the truth is, Israel is not Jewry. Israel does not represent Jews. They claim to. So when I'm talking about Israel, I'm not talking about Jews, despite the fact that Israel really wants it so that you can't talk about one without the other. But uh, Israel is not making Jews safer. Israel is making is making Jews less safe, I would argue, because they're doing awful things and they're claiming to represent Jews and do it in the name of Jews, uh, which is why I'm so heartened by organizations like Jewish Voice for Peace. And if not now, organizing these massive protests against what Israel is doing, saying not in my name, saying a Jew for ceasefire. I mean, that is that is something that's making, I think, Jews safer. It's the right thing to do. Uh, it's the just thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. You know, there is a Jewish tradition called tikkun olam, which means repair the world. That's the kind of tradition that I identify with. That is, again, the takeaway of the Holocaust should be never again for anyone. If you only care about what's happening to Jews, you're just a tribalist. There's nothing noble about that. That's, I mean, self-interest, I guess. But I really am, t I'm so tired of seeing people not look at, you know, you, you keep hearing people say, this is the highest number of Jews who have been killed since the Holocaust. Now, that may be true, but right now, who is acting like the ethnic cleanser? Who are the people inflicting the genocide? It's Israel. It's not Germany. Jews are not at the receiving end of this. October 7th happened. Um, people were upset about it. I understand it was horrific and it was tragic and civilians and innocent people died. Innocent people are killed by Israel constantly and no one speaks up about it. Or I should say, and, and the people speaking up about it, if you're not speaking up about that and you're only speaking up about your fears as a Jew, I think that there's something wrong. It's hard for me as an American Jew to talk about this. And I have family in Israel and I lost relatives to the Holocaust. And I'm kind of tripping over what I'm saying or tiptoeing because I don't want to be called the self-loathing Jew. So I can only imagine what it's like for non-Jews who want to talk about this, who are afraid of being called anti-Semitic. Um, but I just feel like as a Jew, as someone who was raised with this idea of never again, but also there's a very internationalist tradition of Jews being radical allies and in solidarity with other people. And so to me as a Jew, my Jewish tradition requires that I speak out about what's happening to Palestinians. It's mm -hmm. not like a departure from being a Jew. That is what being a Jew means to me personally. It means that you speak out against these things. It means that you say never again. It means that you fight oppression and dehumanization and slaughter, regardless of who it's done to. And this dehumanization is very scary. I mean, the... What are people saying about Arabs and Palestinians when they accept the civilian death toll and pretend that that's either inevitable or unimportant? How do people look at these children? These literally, the man who had a, his, a bag with his yeah. child's body in it, two bags. How do people look at that and not say ceasefire now? And I think the only way you can do that is because you don't see these people as human or your own fear is a fear that blinds you to the suffering of others. And that's not justifiable. I understand it, but you can't have fear at other people's expense. You need to use your fear to empathize with other people. That's the humane thing to do. That's the tradition that you should be proud of having, not a tradition 
which only cares about the suffering of the Jewish people. Yeah. And I think that what you just said now gets to the crux of what we've been, you know, or of the issue that people are taking um, with what we've been seeing from folks like Amy Schumer, for right. example, and yeah. Mayim, Mayim Bialik, Bialik, I think is yeah. their name. And who says Sarah I have Silverman. a big I, who said like Mayim Bialik was like, my heart is big. It's big enough for, and then she names all these things. She includes Palestinians, but it's not for them. She has, she doesn't have any empathy for Palestinians. She has rage for Hamas. Ter- the way she'd said it was she had rage for Hamas terrorizing Jews and Palestinians alike, but you have no empathy for the Palestinians being killed by Israel. Hamas is, Hamas is a political movement that the United States has described as unadulterated evil as worse than ISIS. I'm not worried about how my government sees Hamas. I'm not worried that they're cheering on Hamas. They are viscerally and uh, unadulteratedly opposed to Hamas. They condemn them all the time. I'm worried about our government's relationship to Israel, who they point to as the only democracy in the Middle East, as if they're in this sea of savagery and they're this enlightened, noble nation. Uh, I'm worried about my government's relationship to Israel, which they constantly call a friend. They constantly call an ally. They say our support for Israel is unwavering and they fund Israel. They legitimize Israel. They support them logistically. The war, it's not a war because that makes it sound like it's too symmetrical with two armies. The ethnic cleansing and genocide and you can ask genocide experts about this, and they'll say it is genocide. The genocide being perpetuated against the Palestinians is a genocide that couldn't happen without the support of the United States. So as an American, I feel the obligation to speak out and tell my government, not in my name, stop doing this, cease fire now. If you are an American Jew who hasn't said anything about what Israel is doing to Palestinians, if your safety requires genocide, then you're doing something wrong. And the safety of Jews does not require genocide. In fact, that's going to harm, reduce the safety of Jews. That's that's one of the other ironies, is that people aren't seeing this. But that's not good for Jews morally, ethically, or uh, safety-wise either. Yeah. We should I think be up one in arms that a, that a government that has the Star of David on it is perpetuating these crimes against humanity in our name. If that makes you feel safe as a Jew, fine, but it doesn't make me feel safe as a Jew. Yeah. And that's the thing is I think that is like also behind so much of the, let's say, like fear or self-victimization that we've been seeing from – from folks like Amy Schumer, for example, which I'll yeah. just, you know, I want to give you time to sure. talk about to talk about her and everything that she's been posting. But a lot of it, you know, from from her and other celebrities, as well as from just like ordinary folks on social media, has been perpetuating, and of course, this is again part of Israel's propaganda war, right. but perpetuating this this narrative or this belief that, you know, Palestinian protesters or even people like people not even people advocating for a free palestine or an end right. to the occupation even people just advocating for a ceasefire those right. people are somehow like anti-semitic and want yeah. the the destruction of want to bring about the destruction of jews and there's this line that you know if you support a ceasefire then you support hamas which right. to me is crazy yeah it's absolutely insane um that's obviously was, was developed in some PR room. I mean, I, I would love to have been a fly on the wall when people are like, oh, I know what we're going to say. If you support a ceasefire, you support Hamas. If you support a ceasefire, you support not slaughtering people. I mean, it's really as simple as that. I don't know what you need to see that would get you to understand that a ceasefire is required. I don't know how anyone could want this suffering to continue. I mean, what we're seeing is, again, it's not targeted. Not only is it not targeted, they're not even trying to make it targeted. We have people constantly conflating Palestinians with Hamas. Yeah. They bombed a refugee camp and they pretended that that was okay because they were trying to get one member of Hamas. I mean, when you're losing Wolf Blitzer, 
who literally yeah. worked as an editor for an APAC newsletter, and you have him talking to an Israeli soldier, and he's kind of uh, incredulous at what they did. I mean, that's a pretty important sign that this is, even for a media that constantly justifies what Israel is doing, uh, this is even remarkable even for that media, even for someone who used to work, even for someone who used to work at APAC, which should tell you something. But yeah. um, I don't. Yeah, it's 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 so disheartening. I mean, I'm I feel kind of both. I feel two things at at once. I feel so heartened by the Jewish organizations at the forefront of these protests. I mean, I sp feel like they really do speak in our name, and I think it's a beautiful thing to see these protests. I went to Grand Central Station. I couldn't get in because they had blocked off the subway, so I was on the outside. And I saw the footage of inside and it was beautiful, but there were tons of people on the outside also. Um, I think that, yeah, this line about how a ceasefire supports Hamas, a ceasefire supports saving lives. Yeah. I mean, it also, it, it's also like, if you're an Israeli, don't you want, not want Israelis to be going in a ground invasion? If you only care about Israelis right. and only care right. about Israeli life, don't you not want them to be fighting. And the other thing is that, you know, as Netanyahu and the entire Israeli government plays on people's fears and pretends to care about Jewish lives and Jewish safety, if he cared about Jewish lives and Jewish safety, he'd negotiate. If he cared about Jewish lives and Jewish safety, he'd do things to avoid more bloodshed. Right. Even the way he's dealing with the hostages. You have hostages, their family members want there to be a trade of prisoners. But Netanyahu and the Israeli government and the American government supporting them care much more about vengeance, bloodshed, than they do about saving Jewish life. We know they couldn't care less about Palestinian life. We know yeah. that. But they they don't even, you know, like you had one you had one job, which was apparently to keep Jews safer. And you're failing at it. The Jews around the world, the Jews in Israel, and the hostages who you're claiming to act in the name of. And then people are like... We demand that Hamas release the hostages. What sway do we have over Hamas? And first of all, they've tried to do that, and they have released some hostages. Israel is the one refusing to do a, a trade with them. But also, raise your voice to the government that you that is supposed to be representing you. We pay our taxes to the United States. The United States supports Israel. We're not paying our taxes to Hamas. We're not paying our taxes. Like, Hamas is going to be like, oh, Amy Schumer wants us to release the hostages. I guess we should do that now. Like, why are you wasting your voice? And this yeah. demand that everyone condemn Hamas when Hamas has already been condemned by our government. It's not like they receive any material support and they're condemned by the government constantly. We need to be condemning the actions of the government that we are paying for through our tax dollars. I mean, it's such a no brainer. I can say that I'm sorry about what Hamas did. I can say that I, my heart goes out to the victims. I mean, even they are saying that they, they didn't intend to ki kill the civilians that they killed. But again, why are the lives of Israeli Jewish civilians worth more than the lives of Palestinian civilians? And that's something I have to say. There's no challenge for me there. Like, Palestinians did not kill six million Jews. Palestinians are not my enemy. Palestinians are human beings. And when I see a Palestinian child killed or orphaned or these people who their entire family is wiped out but them my heart isn't like less broken because they're not jewish and i'm not saying that to sound noble or be self-righteous or preachy i'm just telling you the truth like there is no difference for me i don't see yeah. their safety as at odds with my safety yeah. and it's like it's disgusting and scary to me because you want to keep co comparing this to to the the Holocaust? I mean, again, the dehumanization of Palestinians. And I'm not saying there is no anti-Semitism. I'm saying that there is not a powerful government supported by the most powerful government in the world wiping out Jews, trying to ethnically cleanse Jews. And if you want to have be taken seriously when you're talking about anti-Semitism, I think you need to have spoken out against what's happening to Palestinians. Yeah. Or you just look great. like self-interested uh, opportunist. Yeah.
Speaking of self-interested <laughs> opportunists, um, I want to talk about um, – let's talk about some of the stuff. I'm try- I'm going to pull it up on my social media. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff that Amy Schumer has been posting, which you have been vocal about. The thing yeah. that stands out is – and I, I'm not sure if she took this off her feed because of – backlash or if this was just posted to her stories but I mean one of the many things that she's posted including you know invoking Dr. King going into attacking you know um black celebrities over their you know support for Palestine and like going into their DMs and calling them anti-Semites she shared a very very racist and problematic is like an understatement that that graphic or that comic of like how the the Cartoon, yeah. Yeah, the cartoon. Um, basically, I, I believe calling all Gazans rapists. Um, yeah, it was like rape is self-defense. Exactly. So that, basically yeah. like insinuating that – not even insinuating, just outright saying that Palestinians and their supporters support like rape, the killing right. of Jews, et cetera, and the, the beheading of children and, and whatnot. So it's just perpetuating this – of course, these Islamophobic, anti-Arab yeah. tropes, right? That they are these, um, you know, unhuman animals and these savage beasts, but also this very dangerous idea that anyone, Palestinian or non-Palestinian, that supports Palestine, that participates in these protests, including American Jews, support rape, killing right. babies, Etc. I mean, what did what do you make of what did you make of that cartoon specifically? And then also, I mean, what do you make of like what Amy Schumer has been doing over the past couple weeks? I mean, Amy Schumer she posted also a screenshot showing like Arab from some right wing site about Arab funding of schools, suggesting that like Arab funders are somehow fomenting anti semitism. I don't really even understand it. Um, but I'm just showing, using that as an example of how she's like, it's no longer even about just Hamas or just about Palestine. It's like just Arabs are the enemy for Amy Schumer. I mean, where did she like flee the Holocaust? It doesn't even make sense for her to have like this PTSD. Uh, she grew up where on Long Island or something. Uh, she is someone who her fear, her fear of potential anti-Semitism makes her immune or okay with, which is even worse, the suffering of others. All she sees is our people criticizing Israel. She conflates criticizing Israel with anti-Semitism. And also, again, she's an American. She should be speaking out against what the government is doing what the Israeli government is doing with our taxpayers, with with our tax dollars. But she doesn't care. She doesn't care about a slaughter which is being condemned by every single human rights organization, including B'Tselem, the Israeli Jewish human rights organization. Every medical association is condemning this. No one takes this seriously as self-defense. And her silence on that makes her complicit because she has a high profile. And the fact that she's choosing to speak out only for the sake of Jews who, again, nothing, uh, who are not at the receiving end of a pogrom right now, uh, really shows you where her priorities are at. It's it's all about her feelings and not about the material reality being faced by Palestinians. And this material reality includes thousands of civilians being killed, not to mention um, relocated, not to mention fleeing, not to mention fleeing to the areas Israel tells them to go to and then being bombed there. I mean, these people are being persecuted and chased out and not even chased out because in some cases, when they try to flee, they're bombed there. Yeah. So yeah. Amy Schumer is makes me ashamed, honestly. I don't want anyone to think I have anything to do with her. She's like the type of Jew who's the never again to Jews and everyone else can get expletive that's her yeah. that's that's her type of jewish identity i mean look at her cousin chuck schumer he said once that he wanted to um he wanted to economically st- uh shit what was the word he used sorry um schumer 
strangle Gaza? What did he say about Gaza? He said he wanted to. Shit, my brain is a little. That's right. Um, starve them. Fuck, what was it that he said? She... Fuck, I can't remember. He, I mean, look at her. Look at her cousin Chuck Schumer, who talks about the uh, Palestinians. The reason that there's war apparently with Palestinians is because they don't respect the Torah which is actually wrong on many accounts. This is not a religious war. This right. is not a real estate dispute, as people like to, to call it. This is a legacy of settler colonialism. And they do follow the Torah. That's the other thing. They don't call it that, but they actually follow the Old and New Testament, right? Like yeah. that, that's incorporated yeah. into their religion. That's kind of a side point, but he's so ignorant. But he wants yeah. he wants the people of Gaza to suffer. He said that when he was addressing an Orthodox group. He talked about how he had to strangle them economically. Yeah. And I'm just looking at her most recent post was that she was saying, you know, what I want is every hostage back. I want safety and freedom from Hamas for Palestinians and Israelis. How about safety like and freedom the- for, for from Israel for Palestinians? Right. Do, does and that matter at all? Yeah. I think this like her whole – and I, you know, I don't want to like – give her more attention and more, right. you know, of a plat. I mean, she has a huge platform already. But um, I, I just think that, like, everything that she's been saying is just really indicative of this, like, intense self-victimization where yeah. they view, like, any support for Palestine or just, like, anyone who supports Palestinians, like, yeah. living and not being suppressed, like, right. thus, like, hates Jews – and she takes that like as a personal attack. And that's just – and I think a lot of these celebrities have also – and just people on social media and like Israeli lobby groups, whatever, have perpetuated this idea of, um, you know, we need to support Israel because like us Jews don't have anywhere else to go. Right. Anywhere else can to you go, talk, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, you froze. Oh, can you hear me though? You froze for a second. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just repeat that. So within this and a lot of the self-victimization that's happening amongst c- celebrities and Zionists in general is this idea that's being perpetuated by people with really big platforms that, you know, you have to support Israel and you have to condemn Hamas and you have to support the slaughter of Palestinians in Gaza and you can't call for a ceasefire because, you know, if it weren't for Israel – like Jews wouldn't have anywhere else to go. We don't have any other place. Can you right. can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, this idea that Israel is making, there are a couple of things to say. One is that none of that justifies ethnic cleansing and genocide. But also the idea that Israel makes Jews safer. I think people don't want to grapple with how Israel was founded. And th- there's nothing inherently problematic about a state for Jews to be safe in and to find refuge in. But the way it was done was problematic. And you you can just look at what the Zionists themselves were saying. They knew that they wanted to push people out. This was not living in harmony. This was about yeah. creating a Jewish majority where there wasn't one. Um, so I think that people, ultimately, what a lot of people are dealing with now is that they don't want to look at what Israel really is, which is this kind of anachronistic settler colonialism. And they can't look at that so they have to cling on to whatever it is that makes them feel like they can justify israel and so they need to pretend that they're under attack and at risk and at uh being threatened i don't know i would love to be inside inside amy schumer as the show is called but inside amy schumer's head to see if she actually believes this like i don't know if she actually believes that if she walks around this walks on the streets of um i don't know if amy schumer actually believes that she's uh at risk or she's just clinging to this because she knows that what Israel is doing is indefensible. And so she has to distract from that. I don't know yeah. if it's cynical or ignorant. Yeah. But um, again, like you're not the victim here. I mean, maybe yeah. you, you may feel under attack because you're saying such terrible things online that even Martin Luther King's daughter needs to tell you basically to take her father's name out of your mouth which was quite satisfying to see. But of course, Amy Goodman still has that ridiculous pin. It's her pin tweet is her, is her 
is the video she posted about Martin Luther King. Yeah. Even Martin Amy Luther Schu- King. Amy Schumer, Amy Schumer, not Amy Goodman. Yeah. Oh shit! Did I say wh- when do <laughs> yeah. I? Wh- what should I say? Where? How far back do I have to say? Um. No, just the part about like the pinned tweet. Yeah. You just said, Amy, yeah. yeah. Amy Schumer got to hand it to her. She's committed to the bit because even after Martin Luther King's daughter basically chastised Amy Amy Schumer and told her she was misrepresenting her father's legacy, that her father would support a ceasefire, she still has a pinned tweet indicating that Martin Luther King would be on the side of Israel. Yeah. What would you – I want to wrap up because we're almost hitting 40 minutes, but – the last I question I want to ask. I'm sorry. I feel I'm sick. So I hope I'm giving you. No, this stuff. is, okay. this has been really, really great. I mean, I've already okay. picked out like, I mean, a, clips. a bunch okay. of clips that we yeah. can use. Um, I want to ask you like, and this is kind of, will be a summary of everything you've already said, but what is your, like, what is your plea? <laughs> what is your message as an American Jew that supports a ceasefire, that supports a free Palestine? Like, what is your message to the rest of the Jewish American community who is viewing, like, calls for a ceasefire, support for Palestinian rights as, like, an attack on them and their livelihoods? Right. Yeah. So what I would say to people who are seeing a ceasefire as somehow an attack on Jews is that uh, you're wrong. You don't understand. Either you don't understand or you don't care about Palestinian civilians. And if you think it makes Jews safer to be seen as blindly and unwaveringly supporting a genocidal government as it slaughters civilians, I think you don't understand how the world works. You know, if you want to check in on your Jewish friends, that's fine. But check in on your Arab American friends see how they're feeling, knowing that the world is fine with their slaughter, knowing that they're being ignored at the best or dehumanized at the worst, Um, knowing what's happening to Palestinians. Just check in on your Arab American friends or your Palestinian American friends if you have any. And I don't think that Amy Schumer does, honestly. But this idea of check it, I mean, check in on your Jewish friends and make sure that they care about Palestinians. If you want to check in with them and make sure they're feeling safe, okay, but I hope you're taking, uh, I hope you're making the effort to check in on your Arab American friends and your Muslim American friends, because those are the people who are being told that they don't matter or that they're all terrorists or that they're acceptable collateral damage. I mean, just imagine if Jews and not Palestinians were in Gaza, if they were in this open air prison and there was a powerful army wiping them out, how would you feel? And then try to now have those same feelings apply to Palestinians. Because that's what is happening. Yeah. And actually, sorry, just we brought one last thing up that I want to touch on. And it and it falls under this umbrella of like the 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 sort of victim is like the victim complex, let's say, that Zionists have, um, or that they've perpetuated. Um I want to rephrase this. But so what you were talking about is like, you know, check in on your – actually check in on your Muslim friends, your Arab American friends, your Palestinian friends, if you have any, um, because, you know, about how it feels for, you know, to watch them being killed and have the whole world be against – like silent or actively working against them. That's actually something – like that is the talking point or like that is the line or the belief that actually I think a lot of – Zionists have adopted or that at least they're perpetuating. It's what I've seen a lot, you know, in pop culture and in the media and amongst these celebrities is like, how would you feel if you're, you know, you were being slaughtered based on your religion and the whole world is against you? And right. to me, like, that's kind of, I, I just can't compute it because that the is whole world what's with Israel, like, that's, that is what's happening. It's not happening, like, to Jewish people, it's happening, like, October 7th happened, right, like you said, but the, the act of genocide, the act of ethnic cleansing that's happening is happening to Palestinians, um, and actually, the, the whole world isn't against you, the, the entire world, if you're saying, like, you as an Israel, right, if we're adopting the premise that Israel represents all Jewish people, well, the whole world is standing with Israel in terms of, right. like, world powers, the media, right. et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I think that the public opinion is swayed, and that's not because people are anti-Semitic. Public opinion is with Palestinians because people don't like seeing innocent children 
especially, killed, maimed, orphaned. So public opinion is with the people of Palestine. Public opinion is critical of the Israeli government. And that doesn't mean they're anti-Semitic. That means they're critical of the Israeli government. One of the reasons that Jews need to distinguish between those two things. So people like Amy Schumer are making Jews less safe, honestly, because they're making it seem like Israel is acting in the name of Jews. Luckily, we have organizations like Jewish Voice for Peace, um, and if not now, who are pushing back on that and saying, no, Jews are actually, we are Jews who are calling you not to do this. Stop using our name, not in our name, never again. But I think that, yeah, all the powerful governments are behind Israel. Right. So why should we be focusing on random individuals who may say problematic things when there's actually... And a, gov a government, the Israeli government, the Israeli army being backed by the most powerful government and most powerful army, the U.S. army. Uh, that's what we should be fighting against. I don't really understand how people don't see it. There are people who are being told to leave and then bombed when they're told to leave, bombed in the places they are told to go to. If that's not unjustifiable... If that's not a war crime, I don't know what is. And you really need to make sure that your empathy for your fellow tribe, and again, I wouldn't say Israel is representing your fellow tribe, but if you choose to hitch your wagon to Israel, okay, you cannot require that other people are slaughtered for you to feel safe. Our Jewish safety does not require genocide or ethnic cleansing. And if it does, it's not about Jewish safety. We keep hearing this line, Israel has the right to defend itself. What Israel is doing is not defensive. And the irony is that no one ever says Palestinians have the right to defend themselves, but they do under international law have that right because they are the occupied people. It's the occupied who have the right to defend themselves, not the occupier. So nothing yeah. that Israel is doing is defensive. Again, if they cared about saving Jewish lives, they'd be engaging in negotiations, which is what people do when they want to free people, they would trade prisoners, but they don't because they care. They were humiliated. They feel that they were humiliated on October 7th. And why is it that Israel, Israelis get that Netanyahu is in part responsible for this and Americans can't say that? You can say that in an Israeli newspaper. You have people from all different political persuasions in Israel blaming Netanyahu for this in part. But you can't say that in the United States. Yeah. So... Again, you had one job to do, which is apparently keep Jews safe, and you can't even do that because you don't care about Jewish safety. And that's why Netanyahu is buddy-buddy with all these far-right anti-Semitic governments like Hungary and Poland because he doesn't care about Jewish safety. He cares yeah. about Israeli chauvinism. That's what it is. He's an ethno-nationalist. He's an opportunist. He's not particularly religious, but he's fine invoking um, genocidal speech from the Torah. He's fine doing that. He's yeah. fine posting videos of buildings being demolished with people in them, civilians in them. I mean, the fact that Israel and Israeli um, officials aren't embarrassed to say what they have, what they've been saying, or like we saw this woman the other day saying that they were going <laughs> to kill all the all the Palestinians in Gaza, wipe them all out. Yeah. If someone. All it takes is for people to show one video of one Arab or one Palestinian or one Muslim saying something anti-Semitic, and that's proof, apparently, of Jews being under attack and threatened yeah. and the Arabs hating Jews or the Muslims hating Jews and the Palestinians hating Jews. They could One example is supposed to represent all, millions of people. Well, then what about this general or that president or this prime minister or this random Israeli woman just saying we're going to wipe out all Gazans? They're all going to be gone. Doesn't yeah. th Does that represent all Jews also? Or at least all Israelis? What about yeah. the genocidal Israeli mindset? Which is what it is. I and mean, we, we've seen that on display. And somehow I'm supposed to care about one random person uh, saying something problematic who has no power. I mean, they did this video. This guy went undercover to a pro-Palestine rally, and he thinks it was a real major expose because he got people to say things that were like one person was like, go back. What, what's supposed to, where are the Jews supposed to go? He said, go back to Israel, bitch. Oh, wow. Sorry. 
Like you may not like that sentiment, but how does that compare to being bombed? Which is worse, having to hear that or having to lose your entire family in a bombing or lose your own life in a bombing? Right. And that also doesn't like the random protesters yeah. who don't have billions and billions of dollars right. to like enact yeah. the policies and drop the bombs that they, they want to drop. Right. They don't, you know, they don't have control over this entire other population. Yeah, exactly. Like, sorry that there people may say things that you don't like to hear. Uh, they are not dropping bombs on you. Yeah. They're not cutting. I mean, we haven't even spoken about just the regular condition. They're not cutting off water. They're not cutting off the internet. I mean, this is defensive. This is self-defense. Self defending yourself is, is cutting off water. Defending yourself is not even during this time, but the normal time, having a blockade, having an open-air prison, an open-air concentration camp. I mean, you have David Cameron called it that. A Tory prime minister of England. He's not a bleeding heart liberal. And he was yeah. able to see how problematic and inhumane this is. I mean, these are people, Israel put them on a diet. Israel calculated the exact number of calories people need to survive and are giving them just above that. You, is that self-defense to starve a population? Israel didn't pull out of Gaza. Yeah, they took some settlers out of there, but they control what goes in and out. Yeah. You can't have an operation without Israeli permission. The survival rates from cancer for for people in Gaza are so much lower than they are for people in Israel because you can't necessarily even get out for the operation. Yeah. And it and says a lot is, that... Uh, one final yeah. thing is that, you know, look what happened when... It's not like Palestinians don't resist nonviolently. I mean, look what they did with the Great March of Return mm -hmm. where Israeli snipers picked people off. They shot them with their famous precision. It was surgical precision. And they shot unarmed marchers protesters they shot journalists wearing press vests they shot disabled people they shot children they shot medics they went after all these protected categories of people they committed war crimes just objectively stating the facts there's no way to avoid that truth and whatever the palestinians do bds that's nonviolent. they try to make that illegal when they march peacefully they're mowed down. And when there is a violent act perpetuated by Hamas, all Palestinians have to pay for that. Yeah. And it says a lot that like before, like everything you're describing, all of this was the reality before October 7th, right? right. But, you know, only like whatever, whoever it is, Amy Schumer, other Zionists, like apparently they felt completely safe before that. So like, they were yeah. fine with Palestine, like so. They were fine with Palestinians, you know, being besieged and bombed right. and sniped down and having to pass through military checkpoints and having their homes demolished and being and arrested not being able to go to and, a hospital because of a checkpoint and so losing right. a limb or you know, uh, or not right. getting cancer treatment. All of those things were like okay and Acceptable. everyone was no. everyone was safe and everyone was fine before then. But it was you know, right. October seventh disrupted that status quo. Um, and you know, that is, that is what is deserving of our outcry apparently. So disgusting.